Hello, welcome to a new creature tutorial. This tutorial is part one of a series where we cover the creature platformer demo where we are going to show you how the characters are authored in creature and then after that in the subsequent parts I am going to show you how we basically bring those characters alive into Unity, into the Unity game engine and code up the really cool platformer demo. Okay, So I'm gonna start off with the Fox main character. This is the character that you as a player is controlling. So here is the basic layout of the character. Very simple, just two legs and the torso. This is the rig. Again, if you haven't actually rigged in Creature, please watch the previous tutorial videos on learning how to rig the creature. But I'll go through a couple of important points in this rig. So as you can see, I have a couple of bones for the limbs. This is useful for IK motion. So essentially I have three or four bones stretching down the joints of the limbs. Okay, And I have this long chain of bones coming in for, for the tail. This will allow, allow us to make the tail very floppy. It's important to have chains of bones for the tail so you can have the physics or band physics or angle, uh, angular rotate motors drive the motion. And for the spine, I have two bones coming in from here and I have two bones going forwards from here. This will allow me to do a rotational forward and backwards motion. I have this chain of bones coming in here. This is for the floppy motion of the dynamic flesh. This is important, especially if you want a very dynamic, lively looking character. Now I have bones coming in from the ears. Again, I want the ears to be floppy, so I have a chain of bones for them, and I just have one single bone going in through for the head. The other thing which you might want to take note of is that I have one single root bone for the root transform. Okay, so you always have the root bone, the root transform, which is placed below the character. This is very useful. Again, if you want to do global posi positioning of your characters. Okay, so that is basically the character rig. Let's take a look at the animation. So this is in the first, we're in the first animation clip of the character. This is the default idle pose. Looks pretty cool. It's very, very simple, actually, to do this animation. This is just mocked up with a bunch of procedural motors. At the base is a move bounce motor. Let me pull up the anim rig graph again so you can see clearly what's going on. This is a very useful tool if you want to see the overall procedural motor layout or structure of the character. So as you noticed here, I have a couple of motors coming in. I have bend physics. I have IK, I have move bounds, and I have rotate cycle motors all going at the same time. The move bounds motor is operating at the root bone, and this is basically moving the character up and down for the idle motion. Right. However, of course, we have a bunch of IK motors over here that are keeping the legs sort of targeting a point in place. And then finally, to actually, actually lock the foot I'm using a free FK motor at the base, right? So this is a very important motor to use if you want to absolutely lock a, the, the position of a bone to some old space position. So that's what I'm doing. And if you play the animation, you notice the feet are perfectly locked to the ground, correct? Because I'm using a free FK motor. So that's a useful tip. Now, the other thing which is good to know is that if I select that, okay, if, if we take a look at the tail again, the tail has a rotate cycle motor coming in from the base, and this is the, this is the base driving motion. And, and then on top of it, there are bend physics operating on it over here, right? So these are the bend physics motors that are driven by the tail motion. So the end, end result, the end result is when you play it, the tail actually flops because it's driven not just by the up and down motion of the character, but also driven by the rotational motion of the rotate cycle motor, right? Okay, and similarly for the head, I have a rotate cycle motor over here, right? And that is driving the bend physics on the years, right? So bend physics on the years, very simple. And so you put that all together, you put that all together, 
you get the idle motion of the fox. It's really not that difficult. Like with creature, you can knock this kind of animation out within 10 minutes. It's super, super quick and super simple. Okay, let's go to something more involved. Let's take a look at the, let me close this window. Let's take a look at the running cycle. This is the run cycle of the fox. Before I go to the run cycle of the fox, I want to say that the legs are actually driven by custom cycle motors. What's that? Well, if you watch the previous tutorials, the custom cycle motor is essentially a motor that allows you to record your own custom motion and then it makes it into a cycle. So there is another animation clip that actually creates those cycles and that's the walk test clip. Let's go through this clip. As you can see, this, this clip really has nothing other than the leg motion of one single cycle of the front and, and back limbs, right? So if we take a look at these guys over here, like the front limbs, for example, you noticed I have basically keyframed the front limb and also the back limb for 20 frames of the animation. Okay, this is pure keyframe animation because we wanted something really, really special, really custom for the run cycle of the fox. Right. So no procedural, also automated procedural motor is going to give you exactly what you want. So sometimes you want to keyframe it, which is fine. So I've keyframed 20 frames of the the limbs, okay. And then what I've done is I've gone into animate and clicked capture animation, and this basically captures a bunch of custom cycles for me. So I've re essentially recorded or captured the motion of the front and back legs, right, for 20 frames. Once I'm done with that, let's go back to the run animation clip. Now, in this front leg, you noticed I have the custom cycle motor installed, basically for three, three, three joints, three, three bones of, 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 of the fox. And the animation data is pointing to this, this custom clip, a custom capture data called front leg two. Similarly for the back, it's also a custom cycle motor and it's pointing to back leg two. Those are the two captured animation or motion data I, I did in walk test. So if you play it back, that's what I'm, I'm using. I'm basically using the previously captured animation in this clip. Now the background leg is also using a custom cycle motor, okay? And the, the difference is the phase. I've actually offset the phase. The cool thing about custom cycle motor is you can record your own animation, your own custom animation, but you can also basically change it procedurally. You can change the phases of it. You can change the scale, you can change the speed, so it's very powerful. It's almost like creating your own procedural motor, which it is. Right? So now I have the custom cycle motors doing their back and forth motion for the front and back legs. And that's basically the the base running forward motion in the fox. Now the root the root bone again has a move bounce motor and that bobs the fox up and down in, in a run cycle. Right? And everything else is mostly the same as the original, except I have a rotate cycle motor going on th through the rear spine of the bone and a rotate cycle motor going through the front spine of the bone. And this gives it more of a running gait, right? Yeah. So that's basically how the run, run cycle is done. And in the jump motion, that's all it is. This is just pure keyframe animation with bent physics going through on the le on, on, on the tail, sorry, to give it some kind of secondary motion. Okay? So this is keyframed. And it's a very simple keyframe animation actually. Okay, so that concludes the fox. Let's take a look at another interesting character or something that might interest you. Let's take a look at the spirit character. So the spirit character is interesting because it relies on a bunch of procedural motors. As you can tell, there are procedural motors going in, a bunch of rotate cycle motors that are basically driving the roots and the limbs of this, this spirit tree, right? So that's what it's doing. It's also driving the top of the head, some parts of the head. So that part is the same as the fox, right? Because you have a rotate cycle driving it, and then you have a bunch of bent physics for the for the underlying bones to give you that wavy secondary motion. So we've covered that already. What's more interesting, I suppose, you're probably wondering is how the head turning is accomplished. And this head turning is accomplished with the new mesh deformed grid motor. If we take a look at this, 
essentially what it does is it overlays a mesh grid, a grid on top of your mesh. <laughs> and you can basically keyframe or animate this as you please. Right? I can step through the different keyframes of this. These are the different keyframe sets for this character. So this allows you to do some really cool fake 3D warping effects on your character by just dis overlaying this grid deformation tool on top of your original region mesh. And that's how this head turning turning was performed. Okay, so that is pretty cool. All right, and then let's move on to the last character I want to talk about, which is the horseman character. Now the horseman character is a lot simpler than the other characters, but it's kind of funny. That's why I wanted to illustrate it. The idle motion is literally just, again, a bunch of procedural motors, move bounce and rotate cycle motors for the limbs of the horse. And then you have this nice bend physics coming in at the top for the plume of the horse and bend physics also for the clothing of the character. So that was kind of cool. But let's look at the, the run cycle, which is hilarious. So here's a run cycle of the horseman character, okay? And the only real difference is, you know, all the motors are really the same. It's all kept the same. The only real difference is they've been amped up. <laughs> and I have a leg motor, I have a leg motor going in for the three-limbed legs of the horse. It's perfect for that, to make it really awkward, weird motion. So this is the sort of the funny run cycle of the horseman character. Hope you enjoyed. it. <laughs> okay, so this this concludes the walkthrough, the, 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 the walkthrough of all the animated characters for the platformer Unity demo. And I am going to go through the actual implementation Unity next. So I'll see you soon. Have, have fun animating.